This video is a demonstration of how to make a round slab cup that has a darted squared base from a textured slab and mine will have a focal accent for my ceramics to students. Here are some examples, some with foot rings or pedestals and some without. You can see this one has just a squared bottom with little darts, flat bottom, I did actually texture it. And the other one, has the same sort of bottom but with the addition of a foot ring. I'm going to start out by wedging my clay to mix it thoroughly and then I'm going to be cutting or slicing apart my clay into layers, turning it, rotating it, and uh, re-wedging it back together again. I'm flattening it first with my hands and then uh, my rolling pin and I do use red slab sticks of a quarter of an inch um, to get it down to the final thickness that I need it to be. And then I will compress both sides of the clay with a red rib. Once your clay is ribbed, you can use a pattern to cut out the cup form. Now, I wanted to show you that you can just use a regular sheet of paper that I'm just folding the edge and note that the ends are the same width. You can just compare it. Um, and when you make it into a cylinder, that shows you how wide it would be. Now, if I want my cup just a little wider than what I have there, I can still use this as a guide, but then just lengthen it a little bit. I wanted to show uh, you this because people often ask me, well, what size is your template? It doesn't really matter what size your template is as long as you like it. So I'm starting off by cutting three sides and then I'm just going to slide my paper over about three quarters of an inch and I'll finish off the other end. I'm just making sure that I'm keeping everything even as I do that. Now that clay scrap I can uh, pick up. I will actually squirt it down with a, a water bottle and I will stick it back into the clay bags and so the next person can wedge it. I try to get my students to squirt the water down and put away the scrap as soon as they possibly can so it doesn't dry out. Now I'm ready to start adding my texture. I'm going to start with my focal accent, which is going to be my feather, and then I'm going to be texturing the background. The first thing that I'm going to do is roll this little craft foam feather that I cut out in with a rolling pin. And then once it's kind of embedded in the clay, I'm going to take the little wooden roller and I'm going to roll over it. So the background will be the design behind the feather, basically. Now I can peel the feather up. And as you can see, it did stretch a little bit. So I need to just retrim this because using a little roller, it will stretch. And because this is a mug, I need to smooth out the upper edge with a rib. Now I'm going to just trim off that upper edge where I smoothed it with the rib to make sure it all looks even. And I'm going to do this all over again, but in super fast speed so you can see all the processes. Ribbing, cutting it out with the pattern, putting on the focal accent, texturing over the focal accent, re-trimming it. And now I'm ready to prep the ends by beveling. Now notice that you hold the knife at about a 45 degree angle, and then you transfer that same angle to the other end of the slab because these ends are going to be overlapping over one another. So again, you hold it and then transfer that same angle to the other end. So it, the opposite end has a bit of an undercut. Now, to prep these, you need to score the ends of the slab and you're going to wrap it around. Notice I use a little piece of paper that I can use as like a little mini turntable. You press the seam over each other and then uh, we're going to blend the inside. I like to use this wooden tool, which I think is a wonderful tool for blending. It's rounded at one end, pointy at the other. And I'm going to get in that seam and I'm really just going to focus on blending that together and cleaning it up. Okay, I have uh, blended together the seam just on the interior. Now, I always tell my kids, I kind of give them a heads up, at this point, if they don't have time to do any more within a class bell, 
then they have to keep it very, very plastic. One of the key things is to not store it directly in contact with the wooden wear boards that we use in class. A wooden wear board will suck the water out of it, so I always tell them to make sure that they put it totally within a bag, so the bag is between the clay and the board, and um, maybe even throw a damp paper towel or two on it to help keep that moisture so it will remain very, very plastic and bendable for the next day. Now, if I'm going to do a squared bottom, I want to figure out where do I want my seam. So if you look at this, okay, the seam is right here, and I do have it lined up on one of the corners. If you want it to be hidden where the handle is, maybe you don't want it to be lined up on a corner. I prefer to have my corners um, kind of centered around the, the handle part. So I am going to put mine on the corner because I kind of like that when, I, when I'm when i using it and drinking it, that other people can see that seam, and I think it gives it a little bit of a handmade charm. So here's my trick for lining up your corners. I'm going to, first of all, make a, a couple little hash marks that divide the bottom in half, okay? And then I'm going to divide it into quarters with a couple other little hash marks. Okay, So now I have four little hash marks that will center my little um, uh, triangle dart. That will center my little triangle dart that I'm going to be cutting now, out. Now I have my hash marks placed. I know where I'm going to be making my darts centered right on those little hash marks. In my classroom, I have some little um, darts that are already cut out. It's from, uh, oh, I don't know, I think this might be acetate, this stuff. But um, my students will find them in the little Ziploc baggies that are, that are hanging. Now, the darts... Uh, that I have here, I have little marks on them, so I have a center line that will center it, and then depending on how deep you want the dart, you will uh, line it up with any of the uh, varying lines, but make sure that all your darts are the same. So I'm lining up the top edge, or I should say this is the bottom edge, with that middle of the three lines there. So I'm going to line that up. Okay, I have my four darts marked. Now, you remember how when we joined the ends of it, we joined the ends on a bevel. So I am going to create a bevel on the dart as well. So I'm holding the knife at an angle when I cut the side of the dart, and I keep it at the same angle when I cut the opposite side. That way, when they go together, they will match up nicely. It gives you a little bit of a more secure joint that will not have a tendency to uh, pop apart as easily because you can really kind of push it over on itself. But I do make sure that the knife tip is following the line that I drew on, on the actual cylinder. Okay, now that I have the bevels cut, I'm going to also score and slip before I join. And now I'm ready to fold these down. You can see on this one I made a slightly smaller square because I used the longer of the uh, marks on the darts. Next, I'm going to come in here and very gently blend the inside of these beveled connections. Okay. For the base, if you happen to have extra scrap that you textured that you didn't use, of course you can use that. I'm just going to roll out a real small part for my base, and then I'm going to texture it with the roller. 
And now I'm taking the base and marking and cutting it down to an appropriate sized uh, square, thinning it out uh, to the th desired thinness so it doesn't look bulky, and trimming it. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and attach the base. I'm going to first of all score the base. And score the bottom of the cylinder. Add some slip. I'm going to flip. Now, because I have quite an angled uh, bevel in there, I probably don't even need a coil. I think I should be able to just take this and kind of blend downward into the base and that should be good. And here I'm just blending those inside seams where the bevels are meeting together. Next I'm going to soften the edge just with a little water on my fingertips. I'm taking off some of the sharpness, which is, you know, inherent in being a slab. It has sharper edges, so. If I wanted to do any stretching of this, I could at this point by just pushing out. It gives the cup just a little bit more volume. Changes it from a straight cylinder into a little bit more of a kind of a flowing and organic shape where it stretches it and gives it a little bit more of a belly. Okay, I think I'm ready to put this aside, allow it to get leather hard so I can clean it up more, and then I'll be attaching a handle when it gets a little bit stiffer. going to make a few handles. I usually tell my students make at least two handles per piece because you're you inevitably have one that looks better than another. So I'm going to make three to four handles here. Okay. So this is the way that I recommend to my students to make handles, uh, whether it's textured slab or another type of handle. We start off by making a carrot shaped coil and then we smack it down. Now when you do that, it does flatten out the back side, which is what you want. You want a nice flat back side. Then I'm going to take a slightly dampened sponge and I'm going to lift up on the big fat end as I pull. Now next I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to just make sure that the edges look neat and uniform. Okay, I'm just going to set it there for a minute and I'm going to do the other two. In order to texture them, you do not want to have moisture on the surface. You could rib the moisture off, you could wipe it off with dry hands. You could take a towel and blot it off, or you could take a hair dryer and get some of it off. Uh, I'm now going to texture it a little bit. I'm going to use the feather and the roller. So I'm carrying over some of the uh, the texture of the, the focal point into the handle. Now when I position the handle to set up, I always try to position it on something that is plastic that is not going to draw the water out of it. 
Um, if you put it on a wooden wear board, it will definitely get uh, pretty dry in a matter of a couple of hours. I'm going to do that with my other two. I've allowed my cups to sit and stiffen up throughout the, uh, the day. I've given them a few hours uncovered. I'm going to go ahead and start to clean up the details a little bit on the interior where I had blended the coils and I had a few tool marks. I'm just going to use my stiff paintbrush with a little bit of water. And I'm going to try to blend over those tool marks so they're not visible. This is a little bit more visible than normal, so I'm just going to scrape that a little bit up there. Sometimes when it's difficult to get down in there with a rib, the paintbrush is a nice alternative. There we go. Okay. Now, I had uh, worked on the rim before I let it sit up. And I'm just going to go for uniformity here. And here I'm just cleaning and smoothing the rim again to make it look uniform. I just kind of expanded this out just a little bit to give it a little bit more of, a, of just kind of a swoop on the rim. I kind of like that. Down here on the bottom, I'm going to just tidy up the seam with a paintbrush to get rid of any chunks that might be visible. Make sure that it just looks smooth, tidy, but I still want my seam visible. Okay, now when placing my handle, I want to think about probably the feather being uh, visible so when I'm holding it, it's going to be visible to others. I'm, I think I'm going to uh, put my handle over here on this so side. So the feather is visible over here, and then the seam is going to be on this corner, opposite of the handle, kind of close to me. So um, I want to think about how uh, big and the placement of my handle. I'm going to make uh, this handle, I think, a small little handle down near the lower portion of it. Okay, let me hold this up. So this is not going to be, uh, you know, for more than probably two fingers. So I think I'm going to do something like that. Now, if I want to lay down something like this, if you make a little cushion, it helps to protect it. Okay. Going to score, score the cup, and score the handle place where it's going to attach. Add a little water for slip. Okay. Now, when I go to blend this, I like to use this wooden tool and I'm just going to blend downward I want to be aware that I want my handle to be straight I don't want it to be like crooked or tilted and just for a little added security I'm just going to add a little tiny coil it might not really be that necessary, but I do like to add that sometimes for a little extra blending power. Especially on a little textured handle like this, it's a little tricky sometimes, but I do uh, like to do that. And here's an example of adding the coils to the top of the handle and the top of the inside bottom of the handle as well. Just gives it a little extra added security, kind of smooths and ease that transition. I think I like that little handle on that one. Now this one needs a bit more cleaning up. 
than the first one. So this rim had a slight unevenness that I uh, decided to fix with the vegetable peeler. So I definitely need to smooth this out. A little bit of water on my fingertips. And that, that does a pretty nice job with rims. So for this one, I have just a real small kind of a little loop, a one-fingered loop that I'm making. And there we go. I just finished up both of those and I'll set those aside to dry.